Ow, my poor knee. <laughs> hey, our internet works. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Welcome to Fish Talk Live. This is the pregame show. We're just going to pregame for a minute or so. Make sure everything is queued in and working. Give everybody some time to uh, check in, say hello, toss in those uh, those fish picks that you got. Yeah, yeah, we got a. I think we got a bunch of them already. But yeah, give us what you got. Nice. It was a yeah. good week for fishing. Oh yeah, yeah, it was a good week for just about everything. You've been running airboat tours like mad. I'm Five a day. You. It's been a good uh, good week out there. Yeah, a little bit of overtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, time for. An oil change, and we just did it five days ago. Oh, <laughs> it feels that way, at least, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Make sure you uh, like us, follow us, share us all uh, with all your friends and family. Uh, Absolutely. Yep, got to share it. Got a good episode tonight. Got uh, people coming in from other ends of the world. Of the world, yeah. Yeah. yeah they're about six, seven hours away. So yeah. That's, they're ahead of us. That's so. in time zones. Yeah, way out there. Way the heck out there. Yeah. Other yeah. continents. I feel bad. We asked him what time it was. He said 1.30 1 in the morning. <laughs> Woo. So, it's going to be a fun episode. Just uh, let us know that you're here. Mm. Who, who? Dale and Denise. Oh. They say hello. Hello, hello. hello. In internet land. <laughs> Appreciate you all tuning in with us this evening. That's cool. We actually have working internet today, so that's... Uh, Makes a world of difference. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. <laughs> yeah, couldn't uh, couldn't be able to see you guys without it, actually. <laughs> or could or, you not see us? Yeah, <laughs> one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, what you doing, little dude? Yeah, Brody's checking Just everything checking. out. Yeah, Watch making the sure the equipment's all working. Don't hit your head, <laughs> <laughs> like I did earlier. Oh my yeah. god, about knock me out. Too much stuff. Too much stuff. Cameras floating around in the studio everywhere. <laughs> All right. We're going to tune in on a video and we'll get the show started here yep. shortly. Okay. It sounds really good. Like the best it's ever sounded. Hey, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Got a head in there. Yep. All the new wires <laughs> and internet. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> We're pre-gaming it. Oh, there it is. Welcome to the, the fish, fish talk, talk live. live. I think we already <laughs> did this part. We're tuning what? in. <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. Uh -huh. Sorry. Breeze throwing a little audible at us here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we are playing this video. Um, this is Brody's uh, hype video. There's no sound to it, uh, but just watching these young men and women just go out there and absolutely ball. I mean, they, uh, they've been working their butts off, getting ready to start the run for the world title. Uh, wait till you see all. I mean, these guys are just absolutely insane. Five, six, and seven-year-olds. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> absolutely nuts, but you can just tell by their, just their, uh, their attitude. That's their real speed on run too. They go that slow to <laughs> that fast. And that's their real aggression. <laughs> so <laughs> three, five, two legends. Yep. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we've got raffles going on. Captain Mario, one of the participating guides, uh, Captain Teddy, Captain Carlos, Captain Matt, Captain Aaron Hefty, yes. uh, Captain Justin Wilkerson, he just uh, signed up. Uh, oh, I know I'm, uh, I'm missing Bree. Help me out here. Matt, maybe? Matt, yeah. I said Matt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Captain Jacob Imhoff. Oh, Jacob. Everyone oh, donated a half-day fishing <laughs> charter uh, for two guests. Uh, for $10, a raffle ticket, you have your chance to, there it is, you have your chance to win one of those uh, awesome captains for a half a day, Captain Gene Miller. Um, <laughs> and all the proceeds are going to, uh, to get these kids out on the road. These tournaments are very expensive, uh, so we're trying to cut the cost a little bit for the families. But uh, So if you guys want to have a chance to win some best of the best fishing, fishing charters, yeah. then uh, that's your chance. But awesome. All right. So that being said, Bri, are we ready to get in the show? All right, so tonight is science. Oh, 
Hello. The science of a phone. <laughs> yeah. You guys take it over here. I guess we're talking science. <laughs> yeah, the, the science of the fishing aspect of the world. You know, um, uh, when it comes to a fishing spot, certain different little islands, uh, how to fish these islands, how to fish the currents, uh, how to read the bottom, you know, all the science aspect on how to produce good fish. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of go through the ins and outs from start to finish. So that, that'll be pretty interesting for, uh, for people out there. Absolutely. Especially getting us hear all of our different takes on how we would go about these different fishing spots. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I, I can't promise I'll produce fish. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we do. <laughs> Is that a fortunate or unfortunate? Uh, no, we, we do. We, we do a pretty good job of it. So we're going to try to share whatever um, the stuff that we do. Uh, uh, maybe uh, pre pre tournament, pre fishing day, uh, we're gonna go through from start to finish to try to help you guys catch more fish too. Awesome. Yep. All right, uh, Brianna, we cannot hear you, so yeah, there's something wrong with the microphone. So we're not sure what you're saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Having some a Second. few technical difficulties here in the studio. Eh, it's all volume. Yeah. Oh, I could hear that. Looks like we're going to go into catch of the week. I would think so. <laughs> we're still not being, we're still not hearing them very well, but. But yeah, we'll be going, uh, I guess we'll be going into catch of the week here in just a few moments. Yeah. Um, Let's go see what we got. Yep. Yeah, see what we got. Technical difficulties. <laughs> there it is. All right. You're up, Billy. Got a nice, very nice little black drum there. Out there with, uh, who is that? I can't quite read it. It looks like Captain Travis. Yeah, it was on Travis's boat. Love to see that. Mm-hmm. He likes to play on that North Ozello side. It gets yeah. nice and quiet up there. Great place to be able to go do some producing. Yeah, an OKM hat too. <laughs> Very good looking catch there. Gene. Old Captain Gene, big old red. Looked like a pretty day like today was. That's a big old red. Yeah, that's Beautiful another one fish. on Gene's boat there. Yeah. Gene found some good ones out there. Oh boy. <laughs> that's a HPA scenario. Hey, yes, it is. Best place to get your bait. Yeah, that must have been this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, beautiful morning to be out there, especially watching the HPA boats come back in. Yeah, there's some big, girthy reds produced this week. Oh, yeah. Been seeing small handfuls of them out there on the boat. Mm -hmm. Double header. Very nice, Miss Jessica. Oh, yeah. Good looking old snook. The heck is it's that? Triple? triple? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Haven't seen a lot of triple tail brought in in a yeah. while. It's a good looking red. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you all for turning those in. Shoot. Shoot. Okay, I'll shoot. <laughs> but I don't see any hoop. No, I said that because of, uh, I'm sorry, shoot. I'll shoot. Where's the hoop? They don't have one. You stop saying yes. I didn't know. They're going to want the jingle for this. Okay. Like, like a, a good neighbor, neighbor State, State Farm, Farm is there. there. Don't worry. State Farm makes it easy to file a claim on the app for a new car or even that old pacer. Someone call for an old pacer? Like a good about? neighbor, State Farm is there. Yeah, hey, welcome back to which ep what is this? The Nature Coast Financial <laughs> Advisors Tackle Table Talk. I'm so used to being on the couch right now. So, uh, all right, we're going to be talking a little bit about these uh, these grip hooks here. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of different different ones here. Uh, the folks from from Grip Hooks sent these up to us. It looks like they have two different two or three different types of hooks here. I think they got more than that. Uh, yeah, they actually four, <laughs> four or five different there. types. Of, they got the stainless ones and the uh, and the carbon steel ones. I'm, I don't know if you can zoom in on any of this stuff. Yeah, but we have um, we have the the guy that runs this company. His name is Arno. Uh, he'll be coming on here in just a minute. Whenever uh, whenever he's ready. 
coming in from there. Uh, he is. How you doing today? Well, and you? Oh, Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, about your company uh, from start to finish here. Uh, I, when did you guys get started, and um, and uh, where are you guys located, and and all that stuff? Oh, I'm like we we located in in South Africa. Um, we started in it was 2001, and uh, it started with a pretty well. It's like all companies it start with an idea. It was about about uh, putting a range of hook, uh, good quality hooks on the market, predominantly for fly fishing, and um, eventually do some flies and, and all that sort of stuff. So at the moment we've got two fly tying facilities. Um, and we're busy setting up a third to to handle more saltwater and bass type flies. Uh, the grip grip hooks, well, grip hooks was the first range of products that we had, and uh, that's also the oldest range that we had. And it's it's quite a big range. We've got over, I think there's over three hundred different hooks. If you look at that. The styles and sizes and all that sort of stuff, um, and it's for fresh and salt water, fresh salt water bass. Uh, I, that sort of, and we, we keep on looking at new patterns and new styles for different uh, types of fishing and different applications. I got you. You guys also produce these uh, the, these the heads right here. The what are they called gnarly head. Gnarly heads. Yeah, that's a that's a new product that that I've been been working on for. I think I started in two thousand eighteen on that, and it was it was. Uh, I've always looked, wanted to to try and find a, a better quality or better better design popper, and I eventually end up designing my own. Um, and and the heads are available at the moment from various retailers. Uh, for guys who want to tie their own, and then we we also uh, are busy finalising a full range of finished tied poppers for bass, saltwater, which will include redfish, GTs, um, pretty much anything that eats a popper, yes. and uh, also uh, jungle, some jungle versions for things like golden burrata and pico bass. I got you. These right here. And, uh, and if 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 we were going to use them up here. This would be a very good tarpon fly. I don't know if you uh, ever fish for tarpon, but uh, this right here would be a, a phenomenal yeah. tarpon fly. Yeah, just because I've fished. Of, yeah, I have. Colors. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I have fished tarpon in 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 your area. Actually, I know the area pretty well. So, so I've fished Crystal River, Homer Sass, all those sort of, and, and uh, I must say, purple and black are, are my favorite colors for tarpon. So. Hopefully next time when I'm there, I'll throw some some purple and black poppers at them. Yeah, these would work phenomenal. I like the I like the purples. Uh, actually, the orange uh, and chartreuse. I think uh, the last time I went fly fishing for tarpon, um, I like these because uh, on on can, a lot of people can use conventional tackle to uh, to tarpon yeah. fish with live bait with a and they don't. I tell people when when you're fly fishing for them. Uh, uh, if you're using conventional tackle, you've got one shot, maybe two shots at these tarpon that are swimming by, that are rolling by because they swim so fast. With the fly rod, you can take these things and these bright ass, these really bright colors, you can drop it in front of them. Yeah. If, they, if they don't eat it, you can pick it back up, drop it and drop it and drop it until they get annoyed with it and they just eat it because it's just bothering the crap out of them. But uh, that's the main reason I would use the oranges and the chartreuse is just, just to bother yeah. them to, to make them eat. And it, it works so well compared to conventional tackle. <laughs> yeah, but these the, are... The they, hook that you have there, one of, one of the hooks that you have there, I think is the 21571 BM. In the, it's the black, the black nickel high carbon hook. Let me look. It's, we've it's we've quite, got a, quite a short yeah. shank. We've got the one out. Yeah, yeah, the one out. That, yeah. That's the that's the hook that I use for top, and now that's a hook that we developed. Um, we quite a while ago for, for tiger fish in in, in South Africa, while well, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambezi River, those areas for tiger fish, and it's it's a yeah. You know, I was looking for for 
hopefully it doesn't flex uh, because tigerfish have very hard bony mouths. And uh, I started using the same for tarpon about, that was 2009, 10. And they work very well. And that was also um, uh, some of the local guides in the area. Um, just it's their, their favorite go-to kind of hook to, to, to fish for tarpon. And we've used that on some very big fish, even down in Nicaragua as well. Right. For all those ones with the bony mouths, uh, you got to have the chemically sharpened hooks like these. These are extremely sharp, like like razor sharp hooks. And they uh, they have a good penetration, and you you actually have the chemically sharpened hooks in the in the carbon steel also the regular the the, the, um, problem, yeah. the silver ones yeah which you don't see them very often the silver here. one yeah yeah but the, yeah. the 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 nickel ones we see them we see them all over the place the black nickel ones that have the the chemically yeah. sharpened hooks but the steel ones you, or the uh, silver ones we do not which uh, I find that kind of interesting I like those I like them a lot. So um, you said you uh, you started that what when uh, when did this the company start? Uh, two thousand one. Two thousand and one. So you've been around for a little while. Yeah. That's That's, good, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That um, I I would love to go up there and try to start doing some tiger fishing. Well, that was that was my curiosity, Mister Arno. Is okay, come on up here. here come, <laughs> on. come on, we got. It's we coming got. from <laughs> South Africa. What? Are you exactly fishing for? And I mean, as far as different species that's down there, like that just intrigues me. Yeah, they're, they're, there are quite a few different species. We we obviously you know fly fishing starts with trout for most people. We have a lot of trout, um, in not really in the area where I live, but not too far from here we do have. Um, and then we, we have a very interesting climate. We have some really cold weather, and then we have some warmer weather. Um, I live in the warmer area, obviously, so I'm not too fond of the cold. Um, and, and then we have, we have uh, uh, bass, smallmouth and largemouth, more largemouth and smallmouth. Okay. Um, obviously, like the carp, we fish for carp on fly. Uh, Tiger fish, we fish. We have uh, some areas in the north, northeastern parts of South Africa. We have tiger fish. It's it's very limited, but we do have. And we travel to the Zambezi River uh, further north. We travel there quite a quite often to to do some tiger fish. There we, we get some bigger fish. You know, anything from ten to fifteen pounds would be a good fish. Holy smokes! Um, and then saltwater would be on the, a little bit on the South African coast. But predominantly Mozambique and then um, further north, uh, the Seychelles, where we fish bonefish, GTs, um, offshore, we fish sailfish, uh, triggerfish, all those sort of sort of species up there. Very That's cool. what we fish. And then, and then the, with the west coast, there's actually tarpon, the same species um, of tarpon on the, on the African west coast, um, Angola, Gabon. Uh, those areas and there's some really big fish. I've never I've never been there, but I've got friends who guide there and who operate there quite often. Um, and they're getting some really good fish. That is awesome. Yeah, I know we see some good sized tarpon here, so I can only imagine playing on your old coast over there. When you say good sized fish, I yeah. imagine they're quite large. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, it, it's a difficult fed coast to, to fly fish for them, but the guys that I know that operate there have, have sorted out and figured out some places where and um, found some really good spots where they where they get some big top and regularly. Anything, you know, 150 to 200 pound fish, uh, which are really good. So, so it's, 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 it's a place that I still need to visit. I, I love top and fishing. It's I have probably the most amazing fish. Yeah. <laughs> now these uh these gnarly so I've fished, I've fished around your area quite often. Um Azello, Crystal River, Homer's Hassa, I know that, that area quite well. That is awesome. Um, I fished I, I had a friend who lived in the villages just north of um Orlando. It's not, not too far from you guys and we used yeah. to fish with uh Dan Climber. Oh yeah. And um and uh uh, uh launch out of uh, uh either Crystal River or Homer Sasa, mm -hmm. and then go out and fish them. We got some really good fish there. Yeah, he was a, he was a stunning guide in his time for, for our area. Definitely a legend in his own. Absolutely, yeah. 
definitely. And he, he liked that same that same black nickel hook you have there, the 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 two one five seven one one up. The one up. He, he that that was his favorite hook for Falcon as well. Yeah, they're they're sharp. I can tell you that they're extremely sharp. These um these gnarly heads. Uh, you look like you have them in two different sizes and maybe five or six different colors, correct? There, there are four, uh, four different sizes. There's a small, medium, large, and extra large. I think okay. the ones you have there, the tied flies are extra large. Okay. Um, oh, there's another and, one. Okay, and there's, there's, one five, one. there's five colors, yeah. There's five different colors. Okay, and the, the whole idea behind that was to was to try and develop a a, a popper that will where the hook, the hook will be exposed to the maximum because that's that's a problem that that I found with with um, or something that that many fishermen always complained about was that when they fish poppers they they they, they find that they don't get the hookups you know the fish would eat the fly but they don't get the hookups and and you know everybody talked to say they get about 30 to 40 percent of the hookup so that's why i started working on a on a popper with with um to look at the relationship between the hook and and the foam the piece of foam on the hook to maximize that hook exposure and and that's what what you have there is the result and it took me about about five years to get that to where it is now it's and definitely only now busy busy doing the finished flies. It's definitely a beautiful product, and like you said, the amount of hook exposure once these things are on, it's yeah. it almost looks like it'd be a solid eighty percent plus uh, hookup rate. There's no hidden. Ball. Yeah, I think I think only time will tell. You know, it, it's it's interesting the guys that I've sent it to, and I've sent samples all over the world. I've sent samples to South America to a bunch of guys in. Um, including you guys in the States, um, Canada, um, Australia, uh, quite a few places. And um, there's, there's been a lot of interest in the gnarly heads. And I think, you know, even, even guys in South Africa, we've been fishing them and they seem to work. But I think, I think time will tell, you know, whether it's actually whether the whole science behind it will, is working, you know, to, to, to see all the... Is it really increasing the 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 the, the, the hook up ratio? Um, which which I, I definitely think it will. <clears throat> I wouldn't put it on market, but I don't think it would. So <laughs> so hopefully the guys like it. And it's it's a fairly new product. We only we only launched it in January. Um, oh, very. And good. and going to uh, now now the, the finished flies are now in production. Um, so that will be available very soon as well. Oh, very okay. cool. Very now, cool. Now, where would we um, here in the United States be able to get these? Do you have them online or do you have them here locally? No, I don't have them online, but we do. Um, the Scientific Fly is a, is a distribution company. We don't sell retail. We don't, we don't sell direct. So it's, we, we, we supply retail stores. But um, in Florida, Orlando Outfitters is already carrying them. Um, there's a shop in... Um, I think Alabama. That's that. that we, we will be sending a shipment to later this week. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's Space Coast. Well, they used to be in Florida, but this, it's Space Coast flies. And then there are quite a few other shops that I'm busy talking to to get them into into the other shops. And I will be at iCast in in um, July. Oh, very to, cool. To uh, uh, grow the market. So if you guys are there, pop into the to the booth. In the fly fishing area. Absolutely. Yeah, That's I awesome. might I might even see you there. I'm I'm I've been invited to ICAST to, to go for another company there, so I might even see you there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go okay. or not. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But uh you got anything else to add? I mean I, I honestly it 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 kind of enthuses me to wanna to attempt to toss at a tarpon. Yeah. I don't know if I personally have any any <laughs> rigs that will handle a tarpon? <laughs> oh, he's playing on the uh, smaller fish species for yeah. the area. Um, I think uh, I personally think that uh, the, it, it's 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 it'll be more aimed at at the redfish kind of species, redfish right. snook. I think tarpon will, will eat them. I've never I've never tried a popper for tarpon, but but um, I'm pretty sure they will. But they will eat them. Um, 
the nice thing about it is that you can fish it extremely slow and keep it stationary if you, if you have to. Very um, true. But um, I think I think it's I think the redfish market will be the bigger market for um, for the poppers. I don't know why I wasn't even to, Yeah, if you made one that was solid, that's, white, that's a very exciting snook. Oh yeah, I <laughs> fished redfish in yeah I fished redfish in the Mississippi Delta back in I think it was ninety seven, and um, we fished small poppers for them, and that was they just you know they they loved them, and and even now you know if I look at, at the guys fishing redfish, a lot of guys are fishing poppers for for redfish. Mm. Oh yeah, see yeah, I know we use a lot of top dogs and uh, walking. Yeah, the walking uh, baits. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. walking baits for lures. Yeah. I can imagine the poppers would produce quite well. Yeah. We, actually, will. we actually, we yeah. actually use a lot of poppers for trout um, here in the early morning hours. You know, before the sun gets too far over the horizon. Yeah, uh, a lot of these top waters for the big, the big giant trout in really shallow water. Yeah, yeah, they like that. And Which is this? That's this time of season. Yeah, it is. It's, it's this time of year right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's there's a it's it's interesting what you say about um, fishing it in the morning. I think there's a small window in the during the day where you can really fish a popper successfully, and that's very early morning and late afternoon. Right, low light. Um, that yeah, when the fish would come out and, and expose themselves and, and and come up to the surface. So, so that's mm. generally when I fish them. Absolutely, I do look forward to. Uh, I know we do have quite a few folks on board that are uh, watching this show at the moment. I think we plan on giving one of these away this evening. And actually, we do have a question from oh. Dale. He wants to know which weight line would work best. What would you recommend with the poppers that we're talking about right now? I think it would, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it depends on the species you fish for. If you fish the very small ones, um, I like, I like to fish a, like a seven weight if I fish the very small ones and I fish for bass. I don't like to go too low, too much lower because, or lighter. So it gets, it gets a bit difficult. The poppers are wind resistant um, and it gets a bit difficult to pass them. The very big ones, if you fish the Seychelles or like go and fish Toppen and, and those sort of things, I pass those with a cold weight. But um, medium and large, uh, anything from a, a seven to a ten weight. But I think it depends more on the species you fish for rather than the than the, than the, the weight, the weight the for the for the pop. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the flies doesn't matter how heavy it is. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah as far as what uh, your line itself or whatever. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, the more wind resistant the flies, the heavier the rod. You know, that's mm -hmm. if you want to make the casting easier. Good I want deal. to attempt to get into fly fishing soon, but that's a whole different. Whole different species yeah. of fish in there. Yeah, I'll have to do. I'll have to do shoulder surgery before yeah, I even please. get back into it. <laughs> it will take some practice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is too cool. All right, well, Mr. Arno, I do appreciate you coming on board with us this evening. Appreciate these products. Um, I can't wait to uh, actually attempt to put some of them to use in my personal arsenal. Um, and uh, I can't wait to watch Billy try to fly fish. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be it. Will happen. <laughs> that's, that's a YouTube video in the making right there. It awesome. will happen. Well, well, awesome, I guess. Arno, we, we, yeah, we sure do appreciate yeah. you coming on, and also, uh, you know, for for being awake in the middle of the night to talk to us too. That's uh, we really do appreciate. You have a great product, and uh, we'll see you at ICAST. So. Uh, and besides that, I guess go get some sleep now. <laughs> yeah, please pop into iCast and we will have a we'll have a chat there again. Thanks for having me. Good deal. Well, thank you for everything, and uh, we'll see you the next time. Sure. Thanks. It's the moment when everything is on the line, and precision, power, and control make all the difference. A moment over 20 years in the making, anchored in loyalty, trust, and support that goes beyond back, all Avery. expectations. A relentless pursuit of perfection, all born from a revolutionary idea to help you rule the water. Power Pole. Catch more Power Pole. Love it. Uh, thank you very much to Arno, um, Scientific Fly, you know, awesome company. Uh, we, we caught wind of them 
a little while back, and uh, we've been following them, so we're really appreciative of them coming on the show, especially for being up at 1.30 in the morning just to talk to us. And, you know, uh, just, just want to clarify a few things for those that are, you know, talking about why aren't we talking to local uh, businesses and flies. Uh, if we don't support, you know, the industry as a whole, then you are not supporting local businesses. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but almost all the tackle you find in any tackle shop is from China and everywhere else. So it's uh, it's really not about, in my opinion, not where it's from, but it's about the people that's behind it it's and the product tackle. itself. Absolutely. So it's a, <laughs> the fishing industry is a community on its own. So just so want to be very clear on that. Thank you again, Arno. We really do appreciate it. All right. So Billy, Mario, I need your all's help. Uh, Jacob and I are going to go up to Panacea Saturday. We're not going to do much pre-fishing at all. Um, we've got a cold front coming through again. Do you all hear about that? Yeah, yeah, we have some windy days coming. <laughs> so we're going to fish our first uh, first stop of the for us of uh, the Florida Redfish Series. Uh, like I said, no, no pre-fishing. We're not Captain Carlos Gutierrez. You can just go win things, you know, without doing any <laughs> research. So... Since we're talking about science tonight, uh, I need your all's help to, to really break down the science of this stop uh, for the Florida Redfish Series. It's a real complicated area. It's one of those places that, what we, and we've experienced this, uh, one small front that comes through will change everything. It's a real math, vast area. Uh, lots of different types of structure, and it changes quickly. You know, you go from oyster beds. I mean, Billy, you and I fish there during new waters, and um, yeah. it's it's one of the best places, in my opinion, to fish. It was an epic fishery, to it, say the least. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. So I need your all's help to break it down. Uh, I'm going to pull this up on the computer here, a little satellite imagery of an area that we're thinking about targeting. That was the hard part for you guys this weekend, and that's going to be everybody in this tournament. It's going to be that slight north change of wind. Yeah. You know, for... for so we have a theory out oh. there. What do we got? What do we got? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Too. That's a good theory. <laughs> I like that. I have a feeling and it'll be dry land. You'll I, be uh, hiking. I tell you what, Billy, you're good with the weather. So while I pull this map up, Bree, if you wouldn't mind switching over to this map so I can get it dialed in here. Uh, there we go. All right, so, you know, this is this is the area that I'm thinking. And... So you're wanting to get up towards the, uh, to the farming area. I think so. I think the farming area... Um, there was more water there from what we experienced. Exactly, a lot, a lot deeper cuts, you know, we really enjoyed fishing the rock garden area. Yeah. And... Oh, yeah, I'm going to hit no things here. Thank you, Bree. There we go. No things, Chrome. So so let's let's use this as an example. Uh, darker water, we know that. Yep. It was a lot muddier. A lot muddier. Um, oyster Bay. Is it, isn't this Oyster Bay? That's sure. kind of what that looks like it's saying. Thought it was. Oyster. Yep, that is okay. Oyster Bay. So. All right, so all right, we're thank we're you, on the same you. with Brian here, Oyster Bay. So Mario, there's this is some cool structure, it really is. But then what's what what I really like about this area is you get out here and you have those you can see where the water just turns crystal clear. You have the beautiful grass beds, lots of scalloping in this area. Um, so as far as the the flats, which a lot of people do. That weird style of red fishing, go out and like they're fishing for trout, and they go out here and fish for redfish in the flats. We, it, oh, Reed, Reed Brown's got another uh, another opinion. Let's hear it, Bray. All right, so have you met Gary? He's a full sender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Bray said that that Reed said you're gonna have a hard time getting into Oyster Bay. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my skeg or not, but <laughs> the lack thereof. We've we've shaved it down on purpose, kind of on purpose. On oyster bed. <laughs> Probably in oyster bay. <laughs> we'll get in there if we have to, as long as we're not hurting the bottom. But all right, Mario, can you see this? I can. <laughs> so let's. Uh... This is the one day that I didn't wear my glasses, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to sit a little bit closer to the screen to be Put able to see. Put your real squints on. 
Yes, I do. I, it looks like there's a lot of deep cuts in between all these oyster bars. Yes. Quite a few of them. Very dark, very dark waters. I think as long as we can get in there, you know, with that, the power pole moved for the motor, like we could spend just all day on that dang thing in here. Yeah. That we, and the abyss We battery. fish water like this every day. So that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's not that much of an issue to get, get in. Um, as long as you don't damage anything getting in. Like I said, run that power pole move nice and nice and slow, work your way in. I would try to focus on any of these points that when they're right next to your cursor, you see that cut right there? Uh -huh. Anywhere the when the water comes in and out, if it has to make a 90 degree turn to come in through that cut, I would fish right on the on the down current side of any of those cuts that it, it has to make that big hard turn. Both sides of that oyster bar, you that cut where your cursor's at, Yep. And the one that's closer to the middle of the screen, the bottom middle of the screen there, I would try to fish both of those. You, you since know what, the water's got to make that hard turn, it's going to be a, it'll be a deeper cut right there. Since it does have to make that hard turn, uh, I would fish it slow and low since the weather's going to be super cold, uh, or a lot. I should say it, it's going to be colder than the previous few days. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would guess that water temperature will be falling. Pressure, the Especially air pressure is going to be really high. It's going to be shallow. You're going to want to find your deeper cuts. Okay. You know, it's funny. Billy, correct me if I'm wrong. When we did new waters here, we didn't spend a lot of time in Oyster Bay. We did not. But the only place that we actually caught redfish, we caught trout in Oyster Bay, but the only place we actually caught redfish was in that cut on the backside of it. Yes. Wasn't yeah. that it? It was the backside of the cut there. Um, we'd actually watched them because we were on the front side. I guess that would have been the south side of that cut. It's odd. Yeah. <laughs> Odd up there versus We'll call here. it the right side or left side. Yeah. yeah there you go. So on the right side of that, and we actually watched the fish tailing on the back side. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. yeah. And then we snuck out and around and came back to it, and we were able to produce redfish out of that. That's right. Yeah. That was the first time my personal self has actually saw a place that produced tailing fish, because around here it's just not that common. Yep. Not hey. that common at all. Palmetto Island. All right, we're gonna find Palmetto Island here. If you could put me back on the map, Bree. Palmetto Island. All right. I'm gonna spend all day trying to find Palmetto Island, but I'll, <laughs> I'll look at that one. But yeah, I, I just I, I really expect just to hit a lot of these oyster bars. Um, I don't know what the water temperatures have been there, but. All right, so Palmetto Island. All right, so right about here is this. We're gonna call this Palmetto Island. This that Palmetto? says Gull. Gull. That says Gulf Island. Yeah, or Gull Island. Gull. Oh. East of Lighthouse. East. All right, so if this. Okay, so this so this is gonna be Palmetto Island. <laughs> Down left. <laughs> we appreciate the guidance. All right. We're going to need this a lot. Yeah. So, I'm guessing the island has palmettos on it. So <laughs> I, I could tell you this. Um, I'm trying to find the bait I have somewhere here, but uh, but Saltwater Assassin, oh, there we go, makes a watermelon slice color. This, I've got a feeling, is going to be our ticket for color. What do you think, Mario? Yeah, it matches the watercolor. So if, as long as you get something natural that matches the watercolor, you're going to be, that's going to be the winner. Okay. All right. Yeah, this one, uh, I mean, any of the, you know, like this other color, uh, this is actually that little PNV I like a the lot. The little PNV, I think, is going to work a little bit better uh, than the stuff. bigger baits because of the weather. Okay. Uh, because it's going to be cold. You're going to want to downsize your bait. Do that, do that. And slow and low. <laughs> slow and low. All right. Besides that, Mario, you know, artificial only. Um, you know, are you using a light jig head, heavy jig head? Are you dusting the bottom? What what's what's some of the tactics that you would be using if it's an artificial tournament only? Are if I'm if I'm throwing around oyster bars, if I am throwing a jig head around oyster bars, it's probably going to be a one sixteenth or a one eighth ounce jig head, uh, light as possible. Go really light on your leader, um, just to so you don't spook these fish. And I think. I think I would probably just bounce the bottom very slow, moving it four to six inches at a time, just just making little puffs. 
come okay. down, and uh, I think that's going to be your uh, your best bet. I've right. never fished up there, so I'm not sure how how it's going to be. But uh, if if I was the first time fishing up there, that's what I would do. Is I, w I would work it really slow, slow and low, like I, I say a lot. And I definitely want to thank you very much for that. I definitely do want to take this input as well. What did G. Miller have to say, Bray? The salty snack is fire from saltwater assassin in shallow water. I agree. This is actually the bait and the color that won us the championship two years ago. And what do we call it? What do we call it, Billy? The mud chugs? Mud chugs. The mud chugs. <laughs> I mean, it's the ugliest thing. Here you go, Mario. Ugliest dang bait you could ever imagine, but. Oh, yeah. These would work because uh, just because of the size of the bait, um, it's a they're, they're thing. bulky. And they're going to move slow. You can, you can work these. Um, you can put them. I, I would. I would try to put one of these on a football head jig, or uh, or even just a nose hook, and just like a three aught nose hook would work really good with these things, and just work them super duper slow in shallower water. In really shallow, these would work better in super shallow water. Yeah, I would okay. agree with that. Yes. Well, that that's when I'm honestly. These, these are going to be the baits I'm bringing along with a spoon. Not, not, not leaving home fun. with it. Not well. leaving home with it. Without it. <laughs> yeah. I don't... What, what was that, Bree? Who asked that? <laughs> uh, there's a question. Uh, are we bringing Billy's love lures? Yes, we, we never... We're swapping leave. it out for a cast net. <laughs> 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 All right, perfect. Mario, uh, why don't you take us away with a local fishing report so we know what's happening here. Uh, trout fishing just perked up out of nowhere. Then it went down, then it went up. What's going on here right in uh, Ozella? As of today, it's going to be about the same report as we had about two weeks ago um, in all your big major creeks. Uh, we got quite a few trout on the, in the deeper holes uh, at the mouth of the creeks uh, in some of the rivers all up and down the coast, all the way from, well, we'll say from North Bay Port all the way up to Yankee Town. They're, they're doing the same thing. Uh, we found them Saturday uh, on some of the shallower grass flats, three to four foot of water. Uh, just working soft plastics or working live pinfish, small live pinfish also works pretty good. Um, first time using a popping cork, we were actually putting putting live pinfish on a popping cork and drifting them through the potholes in three feet of water, and it worked. It worked. So we we're getting the we we're getting the yeah. I don't usually throw popping corks, but uh, but it actually worked on this uh, this one occasion. So uh, they're still. They're still pretty, uh, pretty good out there. The bigger ones that we're getting uh, have been fewer. Uh, we're getting more of the slot, slot fish, 15 to 19. Uh, not many small ones. Uh, I think today we only caught two shorts. I believe two or three short ones all day. And the uh, greatest thing about today is we had some kids on the boat, and we, uh, they only wanted to keep four of them. We threw everything else back and uh, just kept the four for dinner. Actually, we kept five because the uh, well, the second to last trout we caught uh, actually swallowed the hook. So um, we, we actually kept five. They only needed one and four. Um, starting to see Spanish mackerel coming in on the flats, too. Uh, starting, they're starting to just chase all the bait schools in. So you're anywhere you're trout fishing in that three to four to five foot of water, you're probably going to see Spanish mackerel. Um, sheep's head are starting to come back in from their spawn offshore. Uh, finding, finding some of those on the oyster bars, uh, just on the, any, any of the outside islands. Uh, if you got any decent oysters or, or, or rock shorelines, uh, you'll start seeing sheep's head. They'll probably be transitioning here for the next two weeks or so, two to three weeks. Um, redfish are going to be redfish. They're in the same old, same old places. I mean, you can find them just about anywhere. Follow the mullet. Yeah. So if you find follow mullet, mullet, yep, follow the mullet. We, it's, it's, it rings so true that we made a shirt. So, <laughs> so that, that's all you got to do with the redfish is just, just find, if you find mullet schools, you're probably going to find redfish schools with them. Uh, and they're all normal size fish, anywhere from 20 to 25 inches. We get a handful of the big ones too. So, so it's, it's all good. It's springtime. Everything wants to eat. Have you yeah. seen anything as far as looking at triple tail or anything moving? I haven't been out to look for the triple yeah. tail, but, uh, the, you know, 
year after year, they're usually start showing up in mid March in big numbers. Yeah. And we'll see them all the way till till they pull the crab pots. About yeah, the beginning and, of May, yeah. Yeah, about middle end of May, and then uh, they're still here, but they're they're a little harder to catch because they'll be on grass patches instead of crab pots. I find them so. here and there every once in a while on blue crab traps, playing like the mouth of Homosassa River and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Anybody that has their blue crabs, yeah, out the mouths of the river, it's always pretty cool to get to see on tour. We've actually seen a few in the backcountry too. I've actually I've actually seen a couple of them. Um, didn't know what they were at first, and, and you, <laughs> it kind of surprised them. you because they're really dark colored. When they get into the backcountry, they don't they don't have that yellowish hue to them. They're more more dark brown, almost black. And uh, cool. it'll kind of freak you out when you see one. It's like, what? Oh, what the heck is that? You look at it. It's, oh, it's a triple tail. <laughs> but by then, you're on top of them. And you spook right. them. So. <laughs> Too late. But, uh, Jerry Rose is asking about cobia. Um, I haven't seen any personally myself, but uh, last year, this time, uh, we started seeing them on the flats outside of Homosassa. Um, but uh, I haven't seen any personally because I've been sticking to the backcountry and, and fishing creeks. Yeah, as far as playing stuff. on the airboat, I can't say confirmed seeing Kobe out there. I have seen a lot more sharks and bigger moving bodies. Mm-hmm. We have um, the right temperature. We got the yes. right water temperature now. Yeah, so whether it's right it's a at Kobe 70. coming through or another shark or a tarpon, I cannot promise that of any three of those species. But I, I'm excited to actually start to get my put my eyes on the Kobia. Yeah. I know, you know we do run into them a lot on the flats going in between the reef and the to the mouth of the Homosassa mm-hmm. River. I went for a, a, a triple tail cruise last week, and you know I ran the Chaz line. Um, you know any any of those uh, those darker buoys I was kind of targeting. Yeah, I didn't see one. No, no, not yet. That was last week though. So now mm-hmm. this this up and down weather. I mean, it, it plays affected a lot. If I'm not mistaken, last year we did end up having a, a pretty decent sized cold front come through in April, but it was consistently hot starting in like February. It's been consistently chilly, got warm. Yeah, and then cooled back off mm-hmm. again. Yeah. If we have like four, three to four days of consecutive west wind, we'll start seeing more cobia inshore. Yeah. Because they're lazy. They're going to surf that. Yeah, they're just gonna wind in. They'll they'll come in with the with the currents and the and the wind. I but, I do know that big Kobe run on the east coast uh, was about two weeks behind from last year. So when they followed the manta rays up mm-hmm. the beaches, oh, yeah. it was two weeks behind. They actually said that the manta rays came through, but the cobia did not, except here and there, did not follow like they did. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and I missed it again. That's one thing that <laughs> the three of us need to get over there and and do but it's like a spur of the moment thing that i always hear about the week after <laughs> it's tough to do anything spur of the moment yeah, yeah. especially yeah. in the springtime yeah <laughs> yeah everything runs on schedule the snook is it still in season and are anybody catching any it is out of season officially uh as of april 1st and is anyone catching them right before this last little cool front is when they started to fire up. Now, I can say, um, I'm pretty sure Billy can contest to this as well, running the airboat, we've been seeing a pile of snook. They're all over the place. I mean, the flats, the ditches, uh, you know, in the back country, they're just all over the place. Um, I haven't heard of anybody. Oh, actually, you know, who was it? Was it Teddy yesterday? Didn't I yeah. see Teddy post I think post Teddy up? got a couple of them. Yeah. Jacob did, too. Jacob, Jacob, yeah. Jacob caught a couple. Yep. Yeah. So, um but that answers. Yeah, there's definitely some good size snook out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know I rolled upon a big school yesterday on the reef just out there doing my normal drift. And it was, it was cool watching that wall move. Yep. I saw one, I want to say it was Saturday, uh, in an area where we were trout fishing. Um, it was one of the biggest ones I've seen in the backcountry. This was a, it was pretty large. It was it was probably pushing anywhere between 37 and 39 inches, and it was in a pothole. It was just sitting in a pothole, and I drifted over it. Just a big behemoth. And it just, it just kind of crept away. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I guess this boat's just going to drive over me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the other day when I, I sent everybody the video of the crack that I, I ran past, mm-hmm. and seeing the, the 30 snook come out of that was a pretty cool sight to get to see. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good fish out there being seen out there uh, playing on the airboat, low tides. I love it. Oh, yeah. Good time of the year for it. 
almost that time of the year where uh, catch and release grouper, you know, is is <laughs> second to none. Like mm-hmm. I swear, May is my favorite month of the entire year to go out and catch grouper. Seeing small ones. Yeah, yeah they're just about on every rock bow. It usually does. I don't know if they. I don't know if they changed I, the seasons this year. I looked it up yesterday because I was going back and forth. So we're confirming snook season is closed. Okay, according so to FWC, closed. yeah. They said they were going to change it this year. I didn't know whether they did or not because I don't keep them. So it's, yeah, I would guess they changed it from May for or April thirtieth to April first, right? If that was the closing day. Wait, say that again. So it's March first. To April. To April 30th. That's what they. That's what it used to be. I don't know if it's still. I don't know if it's still that way. But like I said, I don't keep them. Let's Google it because maybe <laughs> maybe I read it wrong. See yeah. if my phone will stay alive long enough to. The way that I read it, I thought it said. It, it made it seem like it was just the month of March. Yeah, we have two months. We we had last year. We had two months in the spring and three months in the fall. Yeah. Which is it's been that way for a couple years. May first. Yeah, April 30th is the last day. Last open day, so it's the same as last year. So I still have time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to keep one. Any specific lures we use for snook? There's a couple of specific lures that we use for snook. Um, anything, well, the, the one that I like to use the most is that DOA 5.5 cal. Yeah. That's a very good bait for snook. Uh, the glow, in particular. There, well, there's two colors. There's an Arkansas glow, which it's, it's basically it's a glow with a darker back, with a tan back, uh, and the regular solid glow, uh, the 5.5. A lot of people nose hook them in the shallows. If you're fishing in the yeah, backcountry, like uh, around St. Martin's Keys and stuff like that, you start seeing these snook in the super clear water. We just put a two-aught hook in the nose and throw That's it out. Bend past the school and rip it across the surface uh, in front of the school. You don't want to work it like a topwater bait. You actually just have it skipping over the top of the water, and they'll come up and chase it. They'll blast it. And uh, don't use a circle hook if you're going to do it. You need to use a J-hook um, for if you're specifically trying to target snook. What happens with snook is when they hit a bait, I don't know if you noticed it, but um, next time you watch snook eat a bait on the, t- on the surface, uh, most fish will come up and grab it and turn. Snook don't do that. Uh, they come up and grab it and swim straight at you like a bullet. And their momentum keeps, on, keeps them coming th- the direction that they're swimming. So if you're using a circle hook, you can't really set the hook in them. They'll spit it out as soon as they figure out it's plastic, spit it out, and then turn, which uh, you're not going to catch them that way. <laughs> so I use a J hook uh, when I'm... When I'm uh, Snook fishing. So when when as soon as you hear that blast and it comes tight, well, it, it doesn't really come tight. You just see the blast <laughs> and, he, and you can actually see the fish staring at you. Once he starts staring at you, you just crank down on it and set the hook. So, um, but that's a good bait if you're fishing the darker water, like up in Yankee Town, um, anywhere around the Withlacoochee River. Uh, I'll put that same bait on a jig head, quarter ounce jig head, chartreuse, uh, and work edges, uh, rock edges, or uh, or any le- uh, ledge type areas, anywhere where it goes from you know, three to four feet all the way down to eight to 10 feet where it drops very quickly. I'll work those edges. And that'd be, I think that's my number one favorite bait for snook. Yeah, that, the, uh, that walking mullet, um, Billy and I had a pile of blow ups from snook on yeah. that thing. That walking mullet, that was a pretty sweet. That was um, a major attention grabber yeah. for those fish. That and mirror lure makes a mullet. That mullet, um, the catch two thousand is probably something like that. Yeah, that that's a pretty good. That's a good hard bait. Um, and then who makes the bait ball? What's the the bait ball? It's a uh, Ozuri maybe where it looks like a bunch of little glass minnows inside one lure. Oh, I think it's Ozuri. Yeah, yeah. That one's a pretty cool lure too. But, yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and hit it. Bree, we're doing a commercial break. We're we going straight into. Uh, giving some stuff away straight into it all right so we're going to be giving away uh some of these popper kits and then also some of these hooks too which these hooks are sweet so i might keep a couple especially these little yeah, fish save ones. a couple yeah of those two <laughs> we're gonna be giving away some hooks 
some poppers, um, and then what we'll also do is what do we have downstairs? How about one of the um, the shirts? Uh, try that in the small town shirts from Extreme Decals. There it is. We'll give away that tonight. So the first 12 people that submitted a photo is getting added onto the Real Fortune. To submit your photo, please comment the photos. Uh, we are doing a little different than last year where we were having you message them. Uh, please comment your photos on the post that we, uh, that we post every, every morning before Fish Talk Live. So, Billy, you're going to spin that bad boy over there? I think so. You want to hold this other side for me so I can give it a real one? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're going to send it in the outer space, huh? <laughs> I'm going to send it to the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's see what we got. We are going for abyss. Oh, fi floating, oh, oh. oh. All right, Florida Redfish yeah, Series. Florida That's a Redfish sign series. that we're winning this one. All right, who we got paired up with the Florida Redfish Series? Brianna, drum roll, please. Florida Ramon Redfish Cruz. Series. Ramon Cruz. Ramon Cruz. Congratulations. You just won some goodies. Hope you're uh, ready to go fly fishing. Yeah, hopefully you're a fly fisherman. <laughs> I tell you what, I would use these baits, though, without. I, you, you definitely could. These are sweet. Could. Nice and soft yeah. and everything else. Definitely on the light, light tackle side. That'd be a lot of fun. Love it. Thank you for watching Fish Talk Live. Thank you uh, to our friends from over there in South Africa that called. That was pretty cool. Much appreciated. Get some rest. Next week, we've got Brandon from Power Pole coming no, in. Not. He's talking about the all new Power Pole One. Uh, it's one pump, two poles. Oh. Yep. One pump, two poles. It's quieter, more efficient. It takes up the same amount of space as a single pump. As a too. single yeah, pump, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. So I've got a lot of questions for Brandon. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to clarify on this pump, um, but I've, I've already went ahead and ordered mine anyway. So, um, But we are taking pre-orders for those pumps, So uh, and they sell it as a pump and two poles as well. So if you want the whole kit, get two poles in the boat, which I can tell you right now, it makes life a lot easier. Uh, let us know. We can get those ordered for you, and you can come pick them up right in the house. And besides that, um, we will see you next Tuesday. That's it. Fish on, folks. Fish on.